Your Old Testament reading for this fifth Sunday after Pentecost is from the prophet Isaiah, the 55th chapter. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose. <coughs> and I and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn, shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar, shall come up the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments how inscrutable his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The second reading for this morning is from St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans, the 8th chapter. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. 
And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Is it because the seed that was cast out wasn't any good? 
Is it because God's word wasn't effective in working faith? No. The word is powerful and effective, just as Isaiah said. And just as St. Paul affirmed in Romans when he said that faith comes by hearing, and hearing from the word of God, or rather the preaching of Christ. So the problem isn't with the seed which is cast out. The problem isn't with the sower either. What Jesus sows is always good. His are the words of eternal life. His word is the good seed. We can count on it doing just what it is supposed to. Bring faith, forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life to unbelievers. Even us. And yet not all will believe. And that's where the tension comes in. And our Lord, quoting and yet speaking through the prophet Isaiah, tells us that there will be people who hear but never understand. And who see but never perceive because their hearts have grown dull and they have closed their eyes lest they should see. You see, if someone hears and doesn't believe, it's because they refuse to listen. Our Lord's words do not sound enticing enough to awaken their dull hearts. <clears throat> Think about this. Why do people stay away from hearing God's word? Why do they stay away from church on Sunday morning or Bible study during the week? Obviously, there are many reasons. For example, our word tells of people who had to go work in the field and bury their dead and say goodbye to their old way of life rather than drop everything and follow him. We're tempted the same. You see, this is exactly what Jesus means in the parable, describing how the devil and the cares of this world will snatch away the word. Don't forget, the devil can fill our heads with any number of reasonable sounding excuses. He doesn't want the seed of God's word to take root in you or your children. He doesn't want you here to hear the words of eternal life. Your old evil foe, he knows that it is the gospel alone which brings you life. Rather, he wants you to stay away from God's word and convince you that it is boring or impossible to understand. He wants to snatch the word of the gospel away from you so that it doesn't have a chance to take root in your hearts. He wants to snatch away the joy of your salvation in Christ Jesus as well. So that rather than being comforted by the gospel, you would despair. And look to yourselves rather than to Christ. So hear our Lord's words. Open your ears. Is your spirit being trampled down like a path? Sitting upon, hurt, harmed by those who snatch God's word away from you? If so, then take our Lord's words to heart. Repent and take heart in the joy of your Lord's forgiveness and his never-ending love. Is your faith shallow? Have the cares, suffering, and fears of this world overshadowed and choked out the promises of God which you received in holy baptism? And you continue to receive through the hearing of his word because the evil one and even your own flesh has convinced you to be too concerned with trivial surface things, things that feel good, bubbly, and trite in your life? Hear our Lord's words. Shallow faith will not survive the burdens of the cross that this life places upon you. <coughs> Shallow faith will die, so repent. Open your ears and take advantage of every opportunity God has given you to study, grow, and mature in His Word. That's what it's here for, for your sakes. Have a superficial faith, one that just skims the surface, is to let the seed of God's Word remain on the surface. But we want those words to go deep. Plants with deep roots will not be easily uprooted. Same thing with your faith. 
without God's word deeply rooted in you, the things of this world will drive you to despair and ultimately even unbelief and eternal damnation. Finally, our Lord describes those perhaps the most dangerous of all for us Christians. Not just the worries of this life, but the heart's true desire to be set at ease through its own efforts, <coughs> to be successful and happy and surrounded by the comforts of this world, rather than endure the suffering that this world produces, the persecution that this world will bring to those who stand firm on the name of Christ. If these things are causing you to doubt, if you are struggling against the flesh, then repent, but also rejoice. For the seed that the Lord has cast into you will bear fruit. It is good seed, just as our Lord says, and he has prepared the soil of your hearts to receive it. That's his doing. You see, the ways of man always seem right, but they lead to death. The ways of Christ often seem wrong, but they lead to life. You see, all three of these types of soil of the heart that our Lord describes do lead to death for all those who ignore the word and come at the easy, broad path of a life apart from Christ. You see, this parable is Jesus' warning to us, but it's also a wonderful word of promise. You see, we do need to be careful that our hearts do not become so dull that even the words of eternal life no longer bear the fruit of faith in us. In this parable, Jesus warns us that it is so easy for the cares of this world to come in and choke out the faith that God has planted in us. We are so busy with work and sports and commitments, it is easy for us to think, I can miss one Sunday. We even rationalize that we were giving for the sake of our families. We take for granted that the church and the word and the sacraments will always be here. And it's true, the word of God will endure forever. We have God's promise on that. But miss one Sunday, and it gets easier to miss the next. But if one excuse is between you and your daily devotion and prayer, it'll be that much easier for the next one. Until before you know it, it has been weeks, months, or even years since you have set foot in a church or opened your Bibles. Again, it doesn't take much. The temptations of the devil and our flesh are easy to give into. It happens all too quickly. Just like a garden so quickly becomes choked with weeds, that's the way it can be for our faith and our hearts. Your friends, just like a garden tending to our faith, is a constant discipline for the Christian. That's why the Lord calls us to repentance, giving us his word of law. Jesus is warning us not to take the faith that he has given and the fruit which it produces for granted. For eternal lives, the lives of your children are at stake. As the prophets and the apostles rightly taught, the law is like a hammer that breaks up the hard ground of our hearts to hear and receive the good seed of the gospel. Rocky, hardened hearts cannot hear, understand, or rejoice in the proclamation of Christ. So the rocks in the field must be broken. Our self-righteousness and pride must be smashed by God's law. And then, the Holy Spirit, He waters the soil that has been prepared by God's own hand to receive the seed which produces faith. You see, it is God's word. There is no seed apart from that word of Christ and Him crucified for you that brings you salvation. And it's that word that must be planted in the barren soil of once hardened hearts. And that's done through the preaching of the word and the receiving of the sacrament. Forgiveness, life, salvation, love, and mercy are given to you by Christ, planted into you through the hearing of His Word. And we thank the Lord because we receive it with glad hearts. Unfortunately, it's always a lack of knowing our great need and what God gives us that determines whether we hear and learn God's Word with gladness or not. But again, thanks be to God. This is we confess in the catechism this morning, not by our own reason or strength, but by the Holy Spirit calling you through the gospel, 
So God doesn't leave our salvation or even our faith up to us. He does not leave us alone to do this on our own because we can't. The old Adam in us would run away. So he holds us by his spirit through his word. And just like the rain and the snow which comes down from heaven, your Lord does give you his Holy Spirit to encourage you and keep you in the one true faith. It's his seed and his gift, his sowing and his watering that maintains faith in you. It's his word given to you which gives and bears fruit 30, 60, or 100 fold in your lives. Fruit which can endure the temptations of the devil. Fruit which can endure the crosses that we all must bear even as we face death itself in this body of death in which we live. And your Lord, he continues to care for you as you hear his word. It's his tender mercy through the means of grace, through his effective life-giving words of forgiveness and salvation bringing sacraments that keeps you in the faith. Consider these words of Isaiah as well. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. Just as seed must be watered after it's planted, you too are watered. The soil that's been prepared, cleared of rocks and thorns, through the word of God is cultivated and watered from above by God himself. Because you too have been rained on from above by the Holy Spirit with the waters of holy baptism. Water in the Word. That's what nurtures your faith. That's what keeps you in the faith. That washes away your sins and breaks up the rock and heart. Jesus tells all who believe that to you it's been given to know the secret of the kingdom of heaven. The very fact that any of us believe is reason enough to give thanks to God for the precious gift of His Word. And so going back to the beginning of the sermon, the real question isn't why some and not others. The real question we need to be asking ourselves is this, why me, Lord? What have I done to deserve such a precious gift? Why would you plant seeds of faith in me when I've sinned against you so many times and my heart has been rocky and cold as stone? Why would you continue to water my sin no heart and open my eyes and ears to hear and receive your word with gladness? Why? Not because of anything in us. But purely because of God's love for you and his mercy. You see, this is the very heart of the gospel. We deserve nothing from God, and yet we get everything. In exchange for our sin, we get God's righteousness. They say, in exchange for the death that we deserve, we get eternal life. And why? All because the word has been cast upon you. The seeds of faith growing up in you from that very same word, watered by the sacrament, by the spirit. But a blessed thing to know that this comforting seed of God's word, sowed by the apostle Paul, declares, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we're children of God of children than heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may be glorified with him. Remember that in baptism, you have been crucified with Christ. And when you remain with his word, you remain with him. As you suffer, he strengthens you. Sometimes that suffering is temptation, sometimes it's death. But again, we cling to the word, the cross, the promises of God. And we thank the Lord. But again, he saves us not because he is good, but because he is merciful. You see, your Savior makes no distinction. He casts the seed where and when he will. And he favors no one above the other. He, who redeemed the whole world with his blood, purchased and won each and every part with his death and with his resurrection. And he would have saved all men. He saves you. He gives you his promises and even sustains you in the faith. And casting his words your way, he does show you his love and mercy with a word that will not change or grow stale. He gives you his forgiveness, which is just as sure and certain as the very word on which we stand. He raises up faith in you, which leads you to eternal life in him. That's the seed of work in you. God given faith. God given forgiveness. God given life. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. 
You have been watching the Divine Service at Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Carlisle, Iowa. Join us this coming Sunday at the Divine Service, which begins at 9 a.m. Our Divine Service is followed by Adult Bible Study and Sunday School at 1030. You're also invited to join us for Vespers and Catechesis for the entire family on Wednesday evenings beginning at 6.30 p.m. We also gather for the morning prayer service of Matins on Thursday mornings at 9.30 a.m. Holy Cross is a member of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and is located at 1100 Market Street, Carlisle, Iowa.